honored to introduce our next speaker, who's, who is someone who has personally you know, um, influenced me and motivated me to continue this work. Now, the past year has been very challenging for a lot of care activists. You know, we've been extremely busy, uh, increasing casework, travel, and to have somebody like Brother Kizer Khan, who is such an inspiration and such a positive role model for us, it's definitely impacted me personally as well as my fellow care activists around the country. And I know he's extremely busy because whenever I travel, I see him. You know, he's been to um, you know, probably all of the care chapters, if not most, within the past few weeks, and he continues to travel and visit them. Um, Kizer Khan is a constitutional rights advocate, a patriot Muslim American, and a gold star parent. He was born in Pakistan and attended Punjab University and University Law School. He was licensed to practice law in 1974. He moved to the UAE and later to the US where he attended Harvard Law School for his LLM degree. Kizer Khan is licensed to practice law in Washington DC, New York, Federal District Court, Southern and Western Districts of New York. He is a member of the American Bar Association, the DC Bar Association, and the New York State Bar Association. He specializes in commercial civil litigation, electronic discovery, and health privacy law, and is now one of our newest care advocates and supporters as well. So please help me welcome Kizer Khan. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening and peace be upon all of you. I am so humbled, so grateful with this honor that you all came to be here in this hall. I don't have a habit of uh, standing behind podium, especially when my family is sitting in front of me. So I'm going to move away from it. But they have told me to not go too far because of the, uh, the uh, technicalities. So I'll, I'll stand in front of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, our thoughts and prayers are with our men and women serving in uniform and their families. Our thoughts and prayers are with the law enforcement and their families because they serve us, they keep the community safe, and they keep us safe. So thank you very much for doing that. I am grateful to CARE for its nationwide service to all communities. There was a time I've been told that CARE started in this blessed city, in this blessed state, for representation of Muslims and their civil liberties, but now it has become a national organization which stands for the liberties civil liberties, civil rights of all. I wish to pay tribute, before I share my story and more details, I wish to pay tribute to our civil rights leaders that have brought us here, that have sacrificed their lives, that have sacrificed their liberties to make sure that we come to this stage, that we come here and we have equal dignity and equal protection of law. So I pay tribute to them along with you. Everybody asked me, and I'll, I'll briefly tell you the story, what uh, this 
why this humble family, me and my wife, decided to appear at the National Convention. Uh, we are private people, we are modest, humble people, and our son, Captain Himayun Khan, had served the United States Army, and while protecting his men and women, the last breath he gave in protection of the men and women that were under his command. So convention wanted to pay tribute to his sacrifice. They prepared a tribute. They contacted us that we can come to the convention and like they had invited other families, we can come and speak and they gave us two minutes. We told them, could you wait so we can consult our other children and we will let you know. We invited our other two sons and their family and our well-wishers and we asked them, should we go? We are private, modest, humble people. And they all of them unanimously said, no, do not go. Your character will be maligned your reputation will be maligned rightly or wrongly. You will be criticized and there will be allegations from the other side, do not go. We said, okay. We sat for two days, Ghazala and I, talking to one another. Is this the time for us to come out of our privacy and come out of our comfort and stand up for the principles that we believe in? And then the second day, I went to check the mail, and there was, um, without a stamp, just an envelope in our mailbox. I brought the mail home, and I opened the envelope. There were four names on that small card. Such and such, class five. Such and such, class five. Such and such, class five. Of course, parents had something to do to bring that little note to us and that note said said Mr. and Mrs. Khan we have become aware our class has become aware our teacher has told that you are invited to go to speak at national convention Mr. and Mrs. Khan please make sure please make sure that Sophia is not thrown out of this country we love her, she's our friend, we will do anything to make sure that she stays in that country. And the reason they wrote that letter to us, that small note to us, was that in December of 2015, Donald Trump had uttered, uttered the most bigoted words in history. He said, I am going to ban all Muslims, I am going to throw away all Hispanic Americans, I am going, the judges are not partial. The judges are not impartial. The women don't deserve equal dignity. It was under those circumstances that that small note came to us. I showed that note to Ghazala. I said, Ghazala, maybe we are people of faith. Maybe this is an indication that our time has come to stand up. I called the convention immediately and I told them that we will come to speak. And they told us that you have two minutes, say whatever you want to say. So I sat down and I started to write my grievances, what I had felt, what that bigoted statement has meant to small children, to decent people, decent patriotic people of America. So I wrote, it was about six pages and I would I would read to Ghazala, it'll be 18 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> and she would uh, delete things out of it and she will make it smaller and then it'll be 10 minutes and eight minutes. And she said, you have two minutes, <laughs> read faster. <laughs> <laughs> so we narrowed it down and we brought it to 260 words and the rest is history. We spoke on behalf of others. Personally speaking, we had no need for this 
participating in this struggle, but we are so proud, we are so glad that we participated in this struggle. Every community, every community that I go to speak, I was in San Francisco last night. I came home at 11 o'clock last night and four o'clock in the morning I came here. That had been the schedule for the last several months and I want to humbly say this to you. Thank you for your patriotism Thank you for your patriotism, your participation, your encouragement at every level is going to be written in gold when this brief, dark period is over. <laughs> Look, we are all immigrants. Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was immigrant. Jesus was immigrant, peace be upon him. Muhammad was immigrant, peace be upon them. We all are immigrant. Some came before, some came later. I am so proud to be Muslim, American, patriot, immigrant of this country. I I want to share some facts with you about immigrants. Please remember this, if anybody talks to you, talks down to you, 30% of Nobel laureates of this country are immigrants. 30%. 90 successful Fortune 500 companies are started by immigrants. If you count, if you count the contribution of their children, the first generation children, that number doubles. So immigrants are productive, peaceful, patriotic citizens of this country. And all this talk about hatred, dislike of somebody that is not like yourself, is co it comes from ignorance ignorance about the history of this country, ignorance about the documents, the founding documents of this country, ignorance of the values of this country that has made this country beacon of hope in the rest of the world. I come from Charlottesville, city of Thomas Jefferson, city of Monticello, city of Declaration of Independence, city of drafting of the Constitution of United States. I am so proud, I am so proud to be a patriot American Muslim. I uh, humbly share this with you, that history has placed each and every one of you in this time. Difficult times, yes, for some very difficult time. I was in Portland, Oregon. Two wonderfully decent women approached me after I spoke, wearing the head cover, came to me and said, Mr. Khan, please share our brief story, one sentence story with the rest of America. May they see strength in each other. And they said, we were standing at the bus stop with our two small children and a gentleman approached us and pointed his finger towards both of us and said, I am with you, never be afraid. And walked out. We, we shook the hand of our children and we told them, look, this is what real America is. This is what real America is. I was, I went to Dulles Airport to pay tribute to the lawyers that 1,000 of volunteer lawyers that have devoted all of their energies to be at the airport just in case if an immigrant comes and needs their services. 
almost 1,000 of them, they take turn. Some of them are government employees. Some of them are holders of the very high office in this country, but they have volunteered. By narrating these stories, I'm telling you, we live in the most blessed country and nation in the world. We live in the most blessed nation in the world. These lawyers take turn to go there. I went there to shake hand and encourage them, and they showed me the sign that they have placed, and then came the Air France crew from the exit area of the international flights, came to their counter and their sign and begin to take pictures. So I asked them, why are you taking these pictures? They said, we want to take these pictures to our lawyers in France to tell them this is what America is all about. This is what Americans are all about. <laughs> and, then, and then as I was moving to see how people are greeted, I saw two very humble, meek, holding can in their hand, two women, decent, wonderful women. I approached them. They had sign in their hand. I uh, pay my greetings and, and, and respects to them, and I asked them, why this? They said, look, we are retired lawyers. One of them is retired judge. We have served this country, but there had not been more difficult time in the life of this country than what we are seeing now. This is out of retirement, out of our comfort of our home. This is the least we can do. And they had the sign facing the exit area. And the sign said, welcome to America. That is this, that is, that is America. That is the America that we all came to, I came to, maybe our forefathers came to, but that is the America that we came to. Are there challenges? Yes. Are we going to keep this country safe? Yes. I will be the first one to stand and make sure that my country, my, my nation is never hurt again, is always safe. But this political rhetoric, you have seen, you have seen the executive order one, executive order two, banning Muslims, un-American, un-American rhetoric. And then this healthcare fiasco. <laughs> I want you to know, each and every one of us lives in the nation of rule of law. Look what happened to executive order one and two. They are all put, halted in their footsteps. Because, because not only all of us, but judges and lawyers are custodian of constitution and custodians of the good values of this country. Look what happened yesterday. They wanted to take away our health care rights. They wanted to give all of those options to the insurance companies and all that. But that, because of your voice, because of those uh, 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 town hall meetings, because of calling the senators, calling the congressmen, look, it was defeated. Such will be the fate. Such will be the face of any step that this administration takes that is anti-American, that is against the American values. We will remain standing, we will speak louder, we will speak firmer, and this country will prevail, its good values will prevail. I want to leave you with one profound thought for you to, when you are at, at peace, think of this. This, con this nation, this, this, this world is divided in two parts. One side is dictatorships, totalitarian regimes. On the other hand, we have democracies, we have right to choose, 
we are so blessed we make mistake in choosing but we are so blessed to have that right this side where all this hardship people suffer the leaders decide what rights they will have what rights they will not have they all want to adopt this if you read the history if you read what is taking place in rest of the world you will come to the conclusion they all want to have what we are blessed with and we will preserve it we will hold on to it we will make sure nobody nobody doesn't matter whether from the white house or from russia or from anywhere else is able to put their dirty hands on our rights and on our civil liberties we will not let that happen for for many decades for many decades i am testament to that for many decades this country its good values i don't call them amendments to the constitution if you ever get hold of the constitution yet one more time please read the declaration of independence first all of this struggle that we are involved in will begin to make so much sense what is in the articles what is in the amendments will make so very much sense to you that it is we are so proud to be american we are so proud to be part of this nation because i don't call them amendments those are human dignities those are human dignities our creator has bestowed those dignities upon us we will not let any white house take it away from us we will not let anybody take it away from us the rest of the world the rest of the world enviously look towards america look towards the blessed nation of america and envies us for these values for these dignities and they aspire to have these dignities never underestimate the power of your voice people ask me what should we do now and this is my humble suggestion humble request remain firm speak about the goodness of the country speak about the values that we cherish this right to able to stand up and speak and protest and have equal protection of law that in the eyes of law we are all equal citizens speak about that come together join hands maybe two person maybe five person maybe 10 person join hands speak to one another speak to others hearten one another hearten the communities hearten the communities that are under attack that are most vulnerable simply raise your if you see somebody in that situation simply say i am with you you don't have to do much to encourage to hearten that person i conclude my my comments by sharing a 26 page letter written to us by a retired army nurse she served in second world war in europe she writes she said mr mrs khan remain standing continue to speak speak louder so that this nation doesn't go quiet about the atrocities as did europe when in germany atrocities were committed against our jewish brothers and sisters we will not let that happen ever again we will not let that happen ever again against any community in this country this is a blessed nation created for a special purpose to lead mankind forward all faiths and no faiths everyone is part of that with equal dignity continue to speak on its behalf and we promise that nurse by writing a note that we promise that we will continue to speak because this nation supports this nation encourages us i was in iowa i was so humbled so humbled to hear a few wonderful ladies they came to me and this 
presented a small basket that they had prepared with a constitution and a flag in it. I accepted that so humbly. And they said, this is what we do every weekend. We gather for coffee on Saturday, and we have bundle of constitution and bundle of flags with us, and we go door to door. We knock the neighbor's door, and we give them a copy of the constitution, and we give them a flag, and we ask them to read. This is, this is what these humble uh, citizens of this country, in the comfort of their retirement, are doing. I can go on and tell you the story of, of the beauty of this nation. This is the only nation, only nation on earth that loves the values of the Constitution so very much. Nobody can defeat us. Nobody can misguide us. Nobody can put us down. We are proud American. We are blessed American. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs>